currents induced in the conducting shell oppose the penetration of a suddenly applied magnetic field and cause a force that tends to crush the shell. Here again is Egerton's boomer apparatus, composed of the driver coil and large capacitor bank with total capacitance of 48 microfarads. The capacitor bank is charged to 4 kilovolts. Discharging the capacitor into the coil with this trigger <coughs> generates a large transient current in the coil, which in turn generates a large magnetic field. Currents induced in the thin foil cylinder to oppose the penetration of magnetic field <laughs> cause a radial inwards force on the cylinder that tends to crush it. Let's see that again. With this time constant in mind, let's see what the actual fields are. Because this is a single shot experiment, we use the storage oscilloscope to record and store measured waveforms. We use this current probe to record the current in the coil in the upper oscilloscope trace. Its gain has been adjusted to 500 amps per centimeter. This small 200 turn coil is placed just above the driver coil to record the time derivative of magnetic flux on the lower oscilloscope trace. We charge the capacitor to 4 kilovolts. As we discharge the capacitor bank, we record the current oscillations in the driver coil on the upper scope trace and the time derivative of the magnetic flux on the lower scope trace. We see decaying oscillations characteristic of an RLC circuit. For our circuit parameters, the frequency of oscillation is about 4 kilohertz. We store these waveforms and reset the scope trigger. We now place the foil cylinder around the magnetic flux sensing coil. Remember, the upper trace records the driver coil current, which imposes the magnetic field, while the lower trace records the sensing coil signal, now inside the cylinder. We see that the driver coil current waveform has diminished somewhat, but that the sensing coil waveform within the foil cylinder has decreased even more. The magnetic field has been shielded out of the cylinder. Let's measure the field inside another aluminum cylinder that is about a hundred times thicker. The bottom scope trace shows the field without the cylinder. Let's reset the scope and put the thick cylinder around the sensing coil. The new lower trace is essentially zero. For omega tau m of order a hundred, the magnetic field inside the cylinder is greatly reduced.